I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, the Giants have a nice trip. They go 6-1. and one. The last 14 games, they're 12-2. and two. They're scoring 8.2 runs per game. That's a lot of offense, but you have to do it against an ace. They'll have an opportunity to do it tonight and see how many runs they're going to score tonight. That's what I'm saying. They're proud of the organization, proud to have been a part of it. And to this day, it still shows. You can't make that up. You can't fake that. Uh, and I think the, the, the fans know that. Line to left. Vote. Not a problem. Side retired. It probably started when I was in Cleveland, where I had a radio show uh, every day for three years. And then I got to San Francisco. Joe Morgan had a pregame show, and he got traded. And they asked me if I'd like to do that. But I also wanted to continue in the business somehow, being blessed with a decent enough voice and not camera shy. Uh, it was kind of a, an easy transition. We always knew Kipe was going to be a broadcaster. And sure enough, when he retired as a player in 1985, he went right to the moon. They're due for another good one tonight. Well, I think they are. And the one thing that, that has really caught up with the Giants has been good pitching by their opponents. After he came to the Giants, he and Mike Kruko became very close friends as teammates. And just for fun, they used to sit and broadcast the games to each other in the dugout. <laughs> yeah, we would sit there and we would have a broadcast on the bench. Welcome to my world. This is the dugout, this is the clubhouse. And if you've ever wondered what goes on here, you're about to find out. You know, we were making stuff up, but never did we ever think that we would be doing it for a living. BB, what are you guys talking about? Uh, we're talking about Will Clark, believe it or not. You see Kevin Mitchell coming out. Ah! We paid $5,000 to see him lose all that hair. In 1990, when I retired, all their television was scheduled with Joe Morgan and Dwayne Kuyper. The Giants have been swinging the bat well, uh, you know, as compared to the rest of the league. And at that point in time, uh, Joe had a, an opportunity to go to ESPN and do uh, the Sunday night broadcast with John Miller. So I got back into baseball in little bits and pieces, filling in for Joe. Then the next year it was like 40 games, and the next year 70, and then and then I did them all. And I would say that I have not reached my peak yet. I think. I'm a smart enough player where whatever I lose age-wise, I'll gain an experience. I foresee Dwayne Kuyper not hitting any more home runs, but I foresee him playing second base like nobody's played it in Cleveland before. If you just came upon one of his broadcasts, it would never occur to you right off that he was a former player, because he just sounds like a professional broadcaster. To me, he's at the top of the list for any of the former players who've gone into actually becoming play-by-play -play men. And he hits one high to deep left field and deep. Hollingsworth is back at the wall. And he's out of here! And this one is over! On the ground to Panic. Panic to Posey. And Lucicum has done it again. Yeah, I think he's the best former player, play-by-play -play guy in history by far. It's very unique to be somebody who knows the game like he does as a player and yet be the play-by-play -play guy kind of steering the broadcast. The combination of Mike and I and two former players, I think that was probably close to being the first where an organization just said, here, here's two former players, just let them go. It's one of the things that we're most proud of is that we are two ex-players in the broadcast booth doing a game. As an analyst, you really have to have something to say about everything. When I'm sitting opposite Kipe, I don't have to be responsible for the middle infield because I got a guy here sitting next to me that did all that. So it's been kind of a signature of our relationship on the air to be able to, to talk ball. Well, years ago, Mike did a rhino yawn and it's awesome. <laughs> We've never had two go off at the same time. One thing about the two of them is they are willing to not just be funny and have a sense of humor, but they're willing to be mischievous. You know, sometimes it can get really weird in here. Watching the festivities as they've started to unwind, these guys are having some fun. Looks good. No, it doesn't. This is gonna be tough play. Sandoval, no! 
Yeah, yeah, got him. <laughs> you know, Mike and I are always very, very close. I know what makes him laugh. He knows what makes me laugh. And if we can put those things together, then generally speaking, we're going to be pretty entertaining to the people at home. Yeah. <laughs> Sea Biscuit likes beer, that's all I can tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Please drive home safely. And then at the end, he takes a drink right out of it. I love working with all my, my partners. It's pretty special. But uh, with Kipe, I mean, he, he's my best friend. We've gone through life together. He's just always been a friend who you can call. And we talk every day. It's great to have a friend like that. When it first happened, you know, for, for, for Dwayne, when Mike was no longer going to be taking a lot of these road trips, it hit him hard. I know he wants to be in Atlanta, and I know he wants to be in Boston or wherever we're at. I miss Mike, but I know why he's not there. When I'm frustrated, I'll tell him, I'm turning you off. This is a bad game. I, I, gotta, I gotta leave. I'm gonna go wash the dog, you know. We all miss Mike, especially Dwayne. Uh, and Mike is not replaceable, but Dwayne's taken like a little responsibility in shepherding along these other guys who are learning it just like he did 35 years ago. In spite of his personal feelings about Mike not being there, he rolls up his sleeves and, and said, okay, what do these guys need from me? What do I need from them? He's handled it as a, a, a total professional. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Javi Lopez. And when you hand the ball to a young kid like Sean Anderson, yeah, you, you ask him, keep the team in the ballpark, but how does he do that? The Orioles showed it. They take advantage of mistakes. They did it last night. So he's just got to expand the zone when he's up in the count and keep the ball in the yard. He took a lot of the burden early for, for me. Just kind of showed me the way it was going to be and how he'd like it to be. And it was just basically let it fly. That was kind of it. Enjoy the moment and, and kind of paint a picture, try to set up what the action will be before it happens. The thing that I, I try to explain to them is, is I'm not going to interview you. You have to come in and do these things on your own. And I'll give you space to do that. And don't be afraid to make a mistake. You know he's not going to another one. He knows that. So he's going to empty the tank and let it fly. Things I want you to say during the broadcast. Perfect. So I'm going to hand you these cards when I think you should say it. No problem. That I, I will do. Practice, OK, ready? yep. <clears throat> <clears throat> me, 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 me. Great insight. You're, be you're better than those other guys at this. That is absolutely true. Once again, you're all over it. The experience I've had in pre and post, I've learned to just be myself. I am getting a lot more reps because I was doing 80 pre and post game shows a year. Then I'm just more comfortable in my own skin doing this. They extended him a little bit in the minor leagues. He can give him 90 pitches today. I only coach them now if they say something that was a little bit out of place or maybe they, they're holding back and they want to say something. So once in a while you need to mix it up a little bit. Stop thinking and just trust your stuff and rely on it. Not really filling Kruko's shoes. I'm gonna feel like a substitute teacher, so I just want to. I don't want to mess it up. I think they have to be themselves, you know, and they are. They've done a great job of that, and you give them enough opportunity. I mean, they're gonna be really good. They entertain me. Da -da 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 -da. Swing and a miss, and that's it. The Giants, for the first time in 52 years, the Giants are world champions. This party is just getting started. They not just love the game, you know, they love the Giants. What you hear in the air, what you see in the air, that's actually who they are. It's totally genuine. Right away with those two, you're a friend. You're somebody who's a part of the group. Being a Giant means something to them, and they care deeply about franchise and I so I think it's the two of those things how much they love the Giants how much they love each other and that comes through every night and Bassett deals and Bonds hits one high it's a deep it is out of here 756 
we all agree as broadcasters, this is the greatest job that anybody could ever have. So they've never lost sight of that. They're excited to be here. They're always prepared and they're always focused on what's going on in the game. You need to pass this story on. Keep this love alive. And when you tell the story, simply tell them, we're the Giants. We're San Francisco. Broadcasting is the big leagues without the pain, but it's a pretty good gig.